So last session, we stopped here with neural collaborative filtering. But before we continue, a quick recap of what we did last session. We started with session-based recommendation systems, and then we were reformulating the recommendation problem as the next token prediction or next item prediction. And your items were encoded as integers. This reminded us of natural language, which is also a sequence of integers. Therefore, we thought of recurrent neural networks and in particular gated recurrent units. So the nature of our data was session-based. And for that, you can think of small websites. Something like Netflix, you are going to have the user ID and you have much more user history and your users are going to log into your system. For that, in the case that you have user ID, we are going to devise different methods to handle such cases. Autorec is one example of that, where you had uh, a list or a sequence of, in this case, users. These are all of the user informations for a particular item. So this is item-based model. It's a vector that goes in. You are trying to reconstruct the same vector. You go through a bottleneck layer, and then that way you're going to be learning the embeddings, and then you're going to be learning to fill in the missing details here. Because if you remember, these are sparse vectors. For a particular item, there might be a handful of users that interacted with that item, but then there is going to be a lot of users that never interacted with that item. And the idea is that you want to fill in the details, fill in the missing information. Then we moved on to another paradigm, which was uh, representing or reformulating the recommender system problem as a search system or a search ranking system, where you have a user, which could be your input, input query. And for that user, you have some features, for instance, from what country are they uh, connecting to your website or are they using your service or are they trying to install an application? What language are they using? What is their demographic information? You have some contextual information also, like what device are they using? What is the hour, hour of the day, day of the week, etc. This is a query. It's as if you're typing something in Google search bar, and then you want to, as a result of that search, output a ranked list of items. In this case, the list of items were applications. For instance, what is the app age? What is the historical statistics of an app? These are the features of your item. So you're doing a lot of feature engineering here. And later on, we are gonna try to remove feature engineering. And the last way that we covered last session was if you have access to a user item interaction matrix. For instance, this user clicked on this particular item or this user rated this particular item. All of that information is in this matrix. It's gonna be a sparse matrix but you want to turn it into a dense matrix. That's the role of your training. And then you would write a model that takes as input integers for the user ID and the item ID. So all of these four paradigms, we are gonna extend upon them in the next few slides. Let's start with uh, neural factorization machines. It has applications for recommender systems. You can also use it for targeted advertising for search ranking, visual analysis, event detection, etc. What is the idea here? Let's look at online advertising, for instance. You want to predict how likely, this is basically your target, you're putting your probability over a target. So how likely a user, this is the first predictor of a particular occupation. So you, have, you could have multiple predictors, user information, their occupation, occupation, etc. cetera, will click on an advertisement, on an ad. So you have three predictors predicting the likelihood. What are those features? For instance, your user IDs and their demographics, like their gender, their occupation, et cetera. These could be the features that you're gonna be working with. And you're gonna represent them using one of the encoding because these are categorical variables. The idea of neural or actually factorization machines is that you want to uh, model cross features. 
or interactions between features. For instance, if you have an occupation, which could be a banker or a doctor, as an example, that could be a lot more. The same thing for gender, there could be a lot more. But let's focus on male and female here. Then you're gonna create a new variable. It's gonna have dimension four. It is gonna be two times two. It's gonna give you a dimension of four. And then when you're modeling this new variable, these are gonna be four dimensional one hot vectors. So one of your observations could be a banker, a male one. The other one could be a female banker, etc. So you can have a one here and zero everywhere else. This is how you are modeling uh, interactions between features. We can think of these as second order interactions. And let's see what the factorization machine is. In the end of the day, you're gonna end up with a sparse vector of features, of real valued feature vectors. The prediction of a factorization machine is gonna be the linear part plus the interactions. And then because that interaction is symmetric, it, it is enough to look at the upper diagonal of uh, the interaction between x and x j. So j could be all of the j's that are bigger than i. And then you need parameters in front of them. Per each i, you are going to have a corresponding, corresponding vector, v i and v j. They correspond to x i and x j. And this is supposed to model higher order terms. And these are embedding vectors. These are the parameters of the model that you're going to be learning. So a linear part plus a part that is supposed to model the nonlinear part. And if you guessed that you are going to replace this part by a deep neural network, you guessed it correctly. So we are going to be generalizing the nonlinear part. K is a hyperparameter that you choose. It's the size of these VI vectors. And how is this related to matrix factorization? So this is a factorization machine. How does it generalize matrix factorization, which was a topic of the previous slide, if you only take into account the linear components, factor, matrix factorization was taking into account the relationship between only two entities. For instance, the user ID and the item ID. This one is taking into account multiple predictors, user, occupation, uh, other demographic information like gender, and then the ad itself. So in this example, you have three of them. Matrix factorization has only two. So factorization machines are generalizing matrix factorization. How do you make it nonlinear? This is already nonlinear. How do you make it even more nonlinear? You guessed it, you're gonna do neural networks. And here, if a feature is zero, it means that that feature is not gonna exist when you're doing your modeling, okay? So a prediction out of a neural factorization machine is gonna be the linear part. The nonlinear part, we're gonna replace with a deep neural network. How do we do it? You have your input feature vector. This is this X here, which is gonna be a sparse. Sometimes it is one hot. Sometimes there could be a real number there. Whenever it is non-zero, corresponding to that, there is going to be a vector. So this is going to be the second vector, which you had here. This is the fourth vector. This is going to be a multiplication of this vector and this number. So you're scaling it down a little bit. This is going to give you an embedding layer that you're going to be pulling it. I need to tell you what is this by interaction pulling. But once you pull it, it's going to give you a single vector that you can push it through multiple layers of uh, linear matrix vector multiplication on top of that nonlinearities. And then you do your prediction in the end. What is that embedding layer doing? These are basically the same Vs as you had here. Per each feature, you have a vector. And then you're going to be creating this matrix. This is this matrix of, sorry, this set of vectors that you're multiplying by their corresponding vectors. So if xi is zero, this is going back to this point, for instance, if x1 is zero, v1 is not gonna be inclu included in that set. v2 is included, it's gonna be v2 times the corresponding value, which is a one here. And if you have v7, it's gonna be included by the corresponding value. And then the next layer is gonna be your bi-interaction layer, which is very similar to what you have here, 
this is a dot product. Here is pointwise product. The output of this operation here in a factorization machine is a scalar. The output of this operation is a vector of the same size as vi and vj. So you're multiplying these two vectors element wise. This is the Hadamard product. And again, this is the upper diagonal of some matrix. And that matrix is going to be clear in the next slides. So that matrix is just vi uh, transpose times vj. So that it's going to give you a matrix, depending on whether you're modeling this as a row wise or column wise vector. You either need to transpose VI or transpose VJ, but whatever that you do, you're gonna end up with a matrix. And you're looking at the upper diagonal of that. This, is, this will become more clear later on. And as soon as you have a vector, the output of this operation is gonna be a vector. It's pulling, it's summing up a bunch of vectors. We can take that and push it through multiple layers of deep neural networks or multiple layers of a deep neural network. That vector times a matrix at the bias Nonlinearity z1 up until zf. Your prediction layer, this is a vector. In the end, you want to have a scalar, that's the score. You're going to multiply it by a vector. And this is going to give you a scalar. That's the prediction that you're going to be putting here. How is this generalizing factorization machines? First of all, you don't have these hidden layers. That's just identity. That's one change. The other one is this age that you have here is going to be all ones. And this is basically turning into the dot product between these two vectors. So you're summing up across the elements, which is exactly this formula here. So if you remove the hidden layers, H, you set it to be a bunch of ones, you're going to get factorization machines back. And we learned that factorization machines generalize matrix factorization to more predictors than two. In this case, three predictors. For learning, what is your loss function? The loss function could be as simple as mean squared error. This is pointwise loss. And we also saw some pairwise losses in the previous session. And this is all of your examples, all of the instances you're using for training. You have two data sets that I want you to explore. One of them is smaller than the other. It has 2 million items. That one has one order of magnitude less instances. This has a higher dimensional feature more users, more items. That one is for app prediction. The other one is for tag recommendation. You have the option to do some pre-training using factorization machine to learn your vectors and then do transfer learning. So these vectors, you can transfer them or you can start from scratch. If you do some transfer learning, things are gonna converge faster. This match and line is converging faster for two different data sets. And then you can compare it to the other state of the art. Any questions about neural factorization machines? Was everything clear? Okay, awesome.